Today, we're making a lactomel, which is a milk-based mead. Let's get started. Welcome to the Discord mead making series. In this series, we appoint someone from my Discord to create a mead recipe that I have to make myself. Now they can either have an idea in their own head or they can pull the Discord. In this case, um, Kyle wanted to create a lactomel and so he kind of brainstormed with some of the other Discord members. He also made one himself, so you'll get to see his version too. But today we are making a lactomel. Kyle is walking away with 50 bucks and a very interesting experience. So let's get into the mead. All right, so a lactomel doesn't actually use the whole base milk in the mead. You actually have to take and curdle it, which is kind of gross, but you take a gallon of milk, in this case, and you put it into a pot. I heated my milk up to about 200 degrees, roughly, and I added, uh, it totaled out to be about six tablespoons of lemon juice. Then you let that set. You, uh, you can pull it off the heat, of course, and that will start to curdle, and you'll see all the, the curds, as they're called, rise to the top. And the whey, which is the water, milk water, essentially, um, will just stay at the bottom. From there, you can take and put it into, the whole thing into a cheesecloth portion, and you can squeeze the rest of the whey out of the curds. And so that's what I did here. I squeezed all of that whey out, and that is our water base, essentially. I then, of course, wanted to add my honey. So we're, we are using a weird recipe today. We're using Lahua blossom honey, which is a very nice kind of honey that we unfortunately uh, uh, are using for this. I kind of wanted to use it as a traditional, but here we are. So two and a half pounds of Lahua blossom honey went in and we're using the Lavin QA23 just because it's a decent fermenter. I don't really know how well it'll fare with the Holy actual Cow, does Recipe. this guy talk a lot? I'm here to give you a brief reprieve from him. Let's talk about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Homebrew Ohio. Let's say you live out in the boonies like me, or you live out there right now, and your local homebrew store either doesn't exist or doesn't have what you need. Guess what? There's a place for you. Today's video is sponsored by Homebrew Ohio, which is an online source for all of your homebrewing needs. So you can hop on there. There's a website. I will show you some fun infographics. Ooh, look at those things I'm pointing at. Ah, I'm gonna buy that right there. Ha, huh, that's great. You can purchase everything you need to brew at Homebrew Ohio. Now they have stuff, fermenters, they have uh, yeast, they have actual ingredients. Let's say you're making wine or you wanna make some beer or hard seltzer or whatever. Let's say you need a hydrometer. Holy cow. Homebrew Ohio has everything you need. So, here's what you need to do. I'm actually affiliated with Homebrew Ohio. They're also sponsoring this, and they're the people giving our wonderful Discord leader his $50, so thank you to them. You need to go click that link down there, check it out, make sure you uh, purchase some stuff through them, and there is an affiliate link you can use as well. Huge shout out to Homebrew Ohio. I hope that you uh, enjoy the rest of this video. Now you get to listen to this dude again. Once the whole way stuff had cooled down, we added our yeast and we are using Fermade O. So I added six grams of Fermade O and my yeast all into that primary. Our starting gravity is about 1.098. I don't know if this will completely ferment out, but let's see what happens. All right, it's been about 15 days. Um, after about five days in, I noticed the gravity had dropped from 1.098 to 1.02 something. So it moved really fast and it's kind of sat there since then. So I decided let's go ahead and rack it over. So I moved it into a new container. I also took a new gravity reading and we are at 1.018. I also, of course, wanted to get a quick taste test. So here's that. It's very, very young, obviously. Hmm. The nose is yeasty, a little boozy. Definitely get some, uh, some uh, muted but bright florals. They're not like, I'm having to seek 
them out. Here we go. Whoa. I don't know if that's the honey or that's a ride. Holy cow. I'm definitely yeasty. I've got some booziness. We're young though, that makes sense. Oh, it's got like um, an interesting, uh, my brain is saying apple-y character, but I don't know if that's what it is. Yeah, it's got a little bit of like a green uh, apple, like a, a tartness that's there that I was not anticipating. I did not expect this to have a tart side. There's no like, to me, there's no component of milk. It's not like a milkshake or something like that. Oh yeah, that, that apple thing is weird. That's interesting. Um, okay, well, very young preliminary taste test. Our next step is to go ahead and put it away. And I decided kind of last minute, I want to add mocha oak chips. So I'm putting one quarter ounce of mocha oak chips in this, and we're going to let them set for probably seven to eight days. And I'll taste test along the way. Then we will stabilize and back sweeten and go from there. About 10 days later, I went ahead and stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, as you see here. And I went ahead and back sweetened it. Now I didn't actually record the back sweetening, but I added a half pound of Lahua Blossom honey back to this to give it some more sweetness. It had been stabilized so it was safe. And then we bottled it as you see here. Now let's get to a final tasting. Uh, Kyle, welcome to, this is the weirdest meat I've ever made. Welcome to this really weird video. Um, you've created a monstrosity. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's been a a meme in the Discord and just among the meat meat community. So might as well do it here. Yeah. Um, so the people have seen at least my process, and I, I think we followed a pretty similar process as far as our meads, which I we have two of them here. I have Kyle's. Who, he has uh, sent me one of his. He basically made the recipe that I made, or the exact same thing, and then we swapped. So uh, we're gonna get to sample both of them and see what they're like. I'm really curious to see if they're anywhere in the same vein. <laughs> I don't really know. So uh, let's do this. They've already seen the process. Let's just go ahead and crack them open and uh, get to porn. Yours had a slight hiss, but I, don't, I just think it was like a transit, like you talked about. Okay, oh. so, yeah. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Whoa, they're so different. Yeah. Okay, so in, in my right hand, I have mine, and in, in my left, I have yours. They're yeah. super similar color, and honestly, almost clarity, too. Yeah, mine's this one, and then this is yours. Yeah. That's, so, nose-wise, for lack of a better term, mine feels a little more cheesy. <laughs> yeah, the, on both of them, there's like this slight Parmesan kind of um, rind, like what you'd throw in for a soup. Uh-huh. <laughs> like that last part no one eats, but you just yeah. toss it in to add flavor. Um, uh -huh. Yours has definitely more of that there is a little bit of brightness and um i get like floral pineapple vanilla see i feel like i get a lot of brightness out of yours like the honey there is like this those fruits you're talking about those uh those uh, tropical fruits and i think that's a largely obviously attributed to the honey we didn't add any fruit in this <laughs> yeah not this time <laughs> <laughs> no I, so, not gonna lie, whenever you are um, creating this recipe and having, you know, going through the process and you picked Lahua Blossom Honey, I was like, oh, I was like kind of mad because I was like, I've never used it before. And I looked up the price of it and I was like, this is like really nice honey that I'm gonna start mixing into some milk. <laughs> like, it's way. Uh. Yeah, I was just um, hearing the responses about Blonde, the the beverage that this is based off of and i heard like oh it has like this sweet riesling and kind of like this uh bright characteristic like a white wine and i was like and after tasting some lahua i figured that would be a good match but i definitely understand like not wanting to waste ingredients 
Well, like, it was I'm, like I'm also I'm also lactose intolerant too. So oh really? Gonna be, yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna That's, be a trip. Yeah, you're shooting yourself in the foot right now. Well, I, I want to start with yours because I feel like um, it'll be fun. I feel like yours is gonna have a little more mead taste than mine. It's much more tame, not as bright, like the nose is so bright and the actual taste of it's much more mellow. Yeah. Yeah, the, a lot of uh, tropical fruit though. The body is like so thick compared to what I'm used to with like this kind of style, especially because I did a side by side with a dry Lahua. Uh -huh. Like at the same time I fermented both. And the fermentation differences were pretty cool anyway, but just the amount of body that the lactose adds is insane. Yeah, there's like, there's such like a, a deep like mango, um, like papaya, kind of that fruit realm, tropical fruit. That's, I really like about this honey. I don't get a lot of, um, you know, we talked about the cheese kind of side, Parmesan. You don't really get a lot of that. There is a, a different kind of mouth feel with this. And I know we both oaked, um, which yeah. mine was different. You oaked with Hungarian cubes, right? Yeah. So I oaked with um, mocha oak chips. That's what I ended up choosing. So something a little different. Yeah. I actually do like this. That's the... the the finish has like a little bit of that quality, but the amount of sweetness I added and also just the uh, the overall fruit character is predominant. So mm -hmm. it's really not as bad as I was anticipating. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I had, um, let's be real, the expectations for this were pretty low, but it's pretty, it's not bad. Like if you gave this to me without telling me what it is, I would, I definitely would not say there's a, a milky quality about it or a cheesy quality. I might be like the, the you know, the uh, aftertaste has a little bit of like, I can't even describe it. It's just, a, it's not warmth. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's the combination of the mouthfeel and the aftertaste. It's, it's so perplexing. <laughs> it's hard to put words to it. Yeah. Okay, well, let's switch over to mine then. Very different nose, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yours definitely has more of that mango characteristic. Mm -hmm. That, that, uh, mm. yeah, it's like mango nectar. Yeah, I didn't, uh, do, what was your final gravity? Do you know? Uh, 1030. Okay. I was gonna say mine's like, I think 10, 15 to 1020, maybe. I can't recall. Um, but yours definitely has a little more sweetness, which I think has helped pronounce some more of that honey character. This has, again, that weird mouth feel, like the, the end aftertaste is kind of like something's funky. I like your uh, finish better though. Like it's a little less milky finish to at <laughs> least my palate. You don't like a milky mead finish? That's not what you strive for every batch? <laughs> mm. It is, uh, like I said, you if you handed me either one of these, not telling me what they are, I for sure thought there would be some milky, like truly milky, not residue, aftertaste, like something that was just screaming in your face, some sort of cheesiness to it. I don't really get that distinctly, but I can get, yeah. like you mentioned the piment idea, like that, um, um, you know, the bland, um, that I have actually, it's funny you mentioned that because I had a friend a couple years ago, he made, he made like two or three meads and his second mead he ever made was a bland. I was, I was like, that's just a weird route to go on. For your oh, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking Chardonnay. Because mm. it has that malolactic fermentation. It has a little bit of that um, butteriness anyway, so. Yeah, I definitely get that. I feel like mine has a little more tartness to it, that sour yeah, yeah. side. Yeah, I think. I think that's what what uh, makes it finish better for me is that the the lemon the acidity is more more balanced with the sweetness. Uh huh. And did you use real lemons? Did you use lemon juice you bought? What did you end up using? Um, I used real lemons. I used six lemons. Okay. 
for the gallon and then um, juice those. Then I saved the zest and added the zest actually in oh, interesting. Um, post fermentation. But yeah, I, okay. Hey, I'm not getting a ton of like zest character, but. I think that might attribute to like why I'm getting like more bright pineapple note. Yeah. But definitely getting more of like a mango note from yours that I really enjoy actually. I didn't use, so I ended up using like um, lemon juice that I had bought because I, honestly I, I forgot to go and get lemons. And so I was like, I had already got the, the pot uh, boiling and I was like, well crap, I got to use what I have. So I didn't use any zest, but I think you're right. The zest adds that extra bit of um, tropical side that i really like about yours i think it, it that it highlights even more of the honey character um mine definitely has more of like a sour element to it that is it's not like a sour when i say sour i feel like a farmhouse sour is what people think of it's not like it's no. not that i'm i'm yeah. pleasantly surprised I'm not gonna lie i was <laughs> Me too I was dreading this uh, quite a bit, only because I was like, man, this just seems like a such an outrageous mead. And I can honestly say, I would make this again. I would I would maybe try it again with a different kind yeah. of honey. <clears throat> the next time I uh, make cheese for, uh, or like the farmhouse ricotta cheese for a lasagna, I'll just save the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, hey, could be <laughs> could be a new house favorite. I, I'm gonna uh, suggest that people try this. I think this recipe, worked out really well. Obviously, Lahu of Lost Some Honeys um, might not be as approachable for some people, so substitute out as you need. But this is interesting, and it worked out well. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I think keep keeping the acidity on the higher side with the lemon and um, definitely reinforcing some sweetness to highlight honey, I think that all helps. I think our oaking helped mm -hmm. um, with the balance and I don't know that, you know, I use mocha oak chips and helps to like try and uh, get some of that character. I don't know that I got any of that. Um, yeah, I think, I think some of that helps with that mango. Um, mm. Cause mango has like that almost, it's not a cook sensation, but it's like more, less bright than a pineapple. Yeah. Um, so I think that mocha like com combined with the pineapple a little bit for the mango flavor, but I I really, I honestly prefer yours over mine, but I'm just happy with how they both turned out in general. Yeah, uh, this could have got so much worse. I, I'm thinking of all the other avenues this could have gone, but man, this has been a lot of fun. And um, so the fun thing about the Discord series is now that you you kind of, I wish I had like a belt to pass around for like each Discord leader, you know, they pass it on to the next. But um, Kyle was the leader for this last one. And this is the third episode, the third mead. We're going to make a fourth one. And the people who want to get involved and be not only a part of the conversation, but the creation and possibly even the leadership of it can uh, check out the Discord. This is where it all stemmed from, the chaos started. You can check out the Discord. It's It'll be down below in the description. But there's a little channel in there. And Kyle will be choosing um, the next leader for the Mead Discord um, within the week that this is posted. So if you're watching within that week, you can possibly be the leader. And Kyle's walking away with not only a fantastic experience with the Lactamel, but also 50 bucks. And uh, so he's going to... You could, you too can be a part of that. I don't know that we'll make a lactamel again, but <laughs> we'll make something fun for sure. So yeah, this thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for hosting this and uh, for, I'm just pleasantly surprised. I don't know how to react because I just, it worked out. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. So if you want to, um, if you want to be in the running, for the next Discord mead leader, hop into the Discord. Kyle will be there too to, to pick the next leader. He'll pass his belt um, on to the next one and uh, we'll see you there. So thanks again, cheers. Cheers. cheers.